Um, okay, so uh, we've had a, uh, a presentation about research that was done on a, a development in in house. Uh, we've had uh, a sort of a, a literature review on MOOCs and and how that's driving, you know, decision making. Uh, and now I'm going to talk about a survey that we did of plugins um, that are used by the community. So lots of different forms of research going on. Um, I, I've introduced myself previously, so I'll just say that my name is Michael. I'm from Australia. Uh, my role is the research director, uh, and part of that is doing research within the Moodle community and encouraging that. Um, why did we do a survey of plugins? Well, um, firstly, uh, there's a lot of development that goes on both at HQ and within the community. Um, if we want to have a clear picture of how to direct and prioritise that development, we need to be informed. Um, we do have some uh, information from uh, the plugins directory and from a few other sources about what plugins are being used, but uh, most of that relates to uh, additional plugins and it doesn't tell us necessarily if someone downloads something if they're actually using it. Um, so we wanted a clear picture of both core and uh, additional plugins, so the stuff that comes in the standard package and the things that you can add. Um, we want to obviously inform the whole community about what things are out there because people like to know what other people are doing, what is popular, what's, you know, what, what are other people doing, so I can give it a go. Um, and also, um, we have uh, a lot of different sectors, uh, educational sectors, using Moodle. Uh, is there a difference in that? And that was some, some interesting research questions in that. So um, we did this survey on dev.moodle.org. It was one of our own sites. It was not anonymous, so we asked the, uh, the response, respondents to, to log in. So it was a, an honest response, and they were basically, you know, had their name attached to it. Um, so, you know, that, that was it. It was, uh, we asked people of a certain demographic questions. I'll tell you how the results for that went. Um, we had um, people primarily from higher ed, uh, and you, you can imagine if that sort of proportion were, were responding from higher ed, that's going to dominate the results, so keep that in mind. But we also had responses from schools uh, and from workplace education, and a few people who said other, uh, and there's a bit of a crossover between some of those as well. Um, the, the respondents came from uh, different roles, and again, so someone could have multiple roles, um, but there was a lot of admins that responded to this because uh, quite often they're the ones that actually understand and know about what plugins are being used on a system, but they're not necessarily, uh, they're just looking at a, at a higher level, they're not necessarily the ones actually doing the use, so keep that in mind as well in, in, in relation to the responses as we look through them. Uh, but there were teachers, instructional designers, decision makers, trainers, the same sort of mix that's actually here at the Moodle Moot were responding to the, the plug-in survey. Um, most of the people said, uh, the majority of the people were saying that they had used Moodle for five years or more and you know, most of the people that responded were not relatively new, they were, they were, they were involved in the community. Um, responses came from quite a, a wide range of countries across the world. Not much from uh, Central Asia there, but um, uh, certainly from, from uh, Europe, uh, the Americas, uh, Australia, and so on. Now, uh, we covered both uh, core and additional plugins in this survey. So the stuff that comes in the standard package and the stuff that you can download and, and use, um, we kind of merged them together because we weren't sure whether people would understand that difference when they were filling in the survey. Um, we didn't cover all of the possible plugins that people could use because it's a very long list, uh, and we didn't cover all the types as well, just the ones that we felt were the most relevant, uh, were involved in the tracker, uh, thing people talk about on the tracker the most, uh, and the ones that are popular on the plugins directory. Um, for the additional plugins, we chose the, the top 10 uh, most downloaded plugins for the previous year before running the survey. Okay, so now the results are a lot of uh, data. Uh, I'm going to try and visualize that for you, but I'll preempt any question and say that this report is available to you. Uh, anyone's free to see it. Uh, it's quite lengthy, so you can get all the details. I'm just gonna go through some of the more interesting stuff in, in detail, and then uh, uh, sort of a bit more quickly through the less fun stuff. Activities. 
So um, you can see here, and there's a lot of small stuff, so I try to make it bigger on the left. The, the most popular ones are quiz, assignment, forum, pretty standard activities, but I've also included uh, the resources in there that, that they come under uh, activity modules in a, in a coding sense as well. So um, these are all the standard ones uh, there. Um, there's not much that you can distinguish there between the different sectors, but I will try and draw out a few things. Uh, in terms of uh, additional um, plugins, these, uh, the ones that are highlighted in green down the bottom, and I, I've drawn, so they're 19, okay, 20 was, uh, questionnaire was 19, uh, certificate was 21, hot pot, checklist, and so on. So um, they're certainly not used uh, as widely as the core plugins, which makes sense because the people have to do a bit of effort to go and make use of these things. But um, it's good to see that people, you know, 45% of respondents said that they were using questionnaire, um, which is, is um, quite significant, you know, when you think about the effort that people have to go to. Um, in terms of some differences that could be pulled out of this between uh, sectors, uh, imagine the sort of teaching that goes on in the workplace and you can see why perhaps certificate would be a relevant thing there. It's about certification quite often and things like that. In, in schools, the game activity was uh, being used. Is anyone here using the game activity? It's a bit horrific, but yeah, okay. I wish someone would really improve that because the code quality is awful. Oh, hang on, this is being recorded too, isn't it? <laughs> Whew. I didn't say that. Um, the, uh, in terms of blocks, let's move on to blocks, which is probably the, the second most widely used sort of plug-in type. Um, again, the, the, it was all dominated by the standard things. But the interesting thing here was uh, the, the most used blocks aren't necessarily the ones that are set up in a course by default. Okay, so this was good because it showed us that maybe we should reconsider what the default blocks are when you, when you get a Moodle course out of the box. So Calendar was, was used, but it's not a standard one. Uh, a lot of people are using the HTML block. Obviously, they're doing things like showing tutor details or, or things like that. So I don't know if you'd make that standard, but it's, it's widely used. Uh, activities was one that used to be standard, uh, but sort of got demoted, I guess, uh, and things like that. So, um, yeah, the uh, ones that are contributed, I was happy to see, because it's my um, contribution, that the progress bar was quite widely used. Uh, configurable reports um, is also, uh, well, it gets categorised as a block, but uh, even though it's sort of reporting. Um, quick mail is used in a lot of places as well, so that's interesting. Uh, between sectors, there's some that are used in workplace, so course completion, uh, the block, uh, the progress bar, and configure reports are used in, in workplace. Again, that sort of reflects the sort of teaching that goes on there, I think. Uh, and badges were more used in schools than, than in other sectors. So we haven't heard much about badges. Someone tweeted that earlier. Um, maybe that's because we're not hearing enough from people who are using it in schools, but it is being used. Course formats, um, there's a much smaller set here, so maybe you can make all that out. Um, but um, the, one of the interesting things here was the, the default course format, if you install Moodle, is weekly. Okay? But the, by far, the most popular uh, choice for formats was um, the topics format. Uh, so we, we uh, are considering having a change. I don't know how significant that would be for you. But um, yeah, that would be interesting. I did um, talk to the developer of the Collapse Topics format. Uh, he's a very active maintainer and he's very um, happy to see that continue in the plugins directory. He doesn't want to see it come into core. Um, so, but um, yeah, definitely Topics is a, a popular thing there. There was a, a list of question types that were examined and a lot of people suggested that they were using the regular ones, but they were also using some of the OU ones. Now, this was prior to a change. These three that were actually suggested are now in core. So before I'd actually published the results, the solution had already been made. Very handy. Um, text filters. 
I don't know how interested you are in text filters. Uh, you can see there, like these numbers are becoming less. So fewer people are using text filters or reporting that they're using it. This is 50% and less there. That's a much lower usage rate. Um, Poodle is the only one that comes up in that list um, and it's used a bit more in schools than elsewhere. Um, enrollment plugins are, are dominated by the simple ones. Okay, so you still got, I mean, a lot of Moodle out there is small scale. Uh, so it's not necessarily relying on uh, a big student integration system or, or you know, an LDAP system. But, um, yeah, so manual enrolments and self-enrolments are very important still. Uh, authentication methods still. Manual is way up there. So a lot of those small sites uh, coming in and, and showing that these are important. But LDAP came in there uh, and email-based self-registration. Self Reports. Um, reports, now you can see that there's a, a bit more uh, wide usage here and higher numbers uh, of usage. Uh, so people are using the logs, obviously they're keen to see what's going on there. The activity report, activity completion, more logs and so on. Um, so those reports are, they're all going, you know, they're, they're staying, they're, they're well used. Um, higher education tends to use reports more than in other sectors. Uh, I guess they're, they're, they've got the time to actually reflect a bit more in higher education, or the need to. Repositories, um, certainly file uploads is, is popular, uh, and then other forms of files. Some of the, um, there's ones down the bottom there that are very um, lowly in the numbers there, and I, I even wonder if someone, if there, you know, there's a small amount of error associated with surveys like this, maybe that's, prone to that. Uh, I doubt, you know, if someone said, oh, we've got a very important alfresco bug to fix, it's going to get much attention with this in mind. Uh, portfolios, uh, these are very, you know, the, the, the highest we're talking about is 18%. So people aren't using portfolios very much uh, uh, in general compared to other plug-in types. We did ask people at the end too, because you know, obviously we did list all of the plugins for you know people to check off. Um, what are the plugins that they were using that weren't on the list? Attendance got a bit of a, a run in. Um, Turn it in is there, and we've met, people mentioned it here. Group choice and a few others there. Um, that's the ones that were sort of mentioned more than ten times. All right. So what can we gain from all of this information? Well, certainly in terms of when we're looking as developers at where we can focus our efforts, uh, the ones that are, uh, you know, obviously in use more should probably get a bit more time. Uh, so assignment, quiz and forum uh, are very important to very people. Uh, all of the resources, the standard resources are very important as well. Uh, the calendar block is, uh, is something that we, we want to promote and maybe it also needs some work. Uh, the topics format is something that's been considered as a, a default topic. Uh, it's a default course format. Um, the standard um, sort of question types are, are there, and uh, they're obviously getting a lot of attention still. Uh, and manual enrolments should not be neglected um, amongst the noise from different levels of education. Sorry. Um, the highest use additional plugins, if you're looking to see what are really popular things that you might want to try on top of the standard Moodle. Questionnaire is out there. Um, there is a, an amalgamation of a number of features of the various surveying tools uh, in the ever still to come Survey Pro, so you might want to consider that as well. A certificate, um, that the person who maintains that is actually a HQ developer. He sort of adopted it and hasn't done much with it, but now there's a bit of a resurgence. It's being redeveloped and hopefully in the coming months there will be a new version of certificate uh, and that may be something that might make it into core in future. Uh, the progress bar is my own, uh, I encourage you to try it out, it will never be part of core Moodle. Uh, there might be other instances of progress bars uh, but not that particular one. Uh, collapsed topics won't be part of core but you're well, welcome to try it out. Um, and the OU question types have already got the tick there because they're in. All right. Um, so higher education obviously dominated the results of this, um, so it was hard to distinguish that the, their use from other sectors. But workplace, the self-paced nature and the certification obviously has a, an influence on what goes on there. Uh, schools are a bit more exploratory. They tend to use more 
plugins and uh, different plugins to the other sectors. General advice, uh, grab the report. I've linked to it from my description of this presentation. Um, or if you just search, search for Moodle plugins report 2015, uh, you should probably come across it. Um, and Dev's uh, final piece of advice that sort of people offered in the survey was try and keep your plugins up to date. One of the main reasons they choose or don't choose a plugin is if they can see whether it's being maintained or not. All right, um, maybe one question is all I have time for. <laughs> Um, you mentioned the uh, progress bar won't go into court, but are you aware it's the top voted uh, story for the Moodle User Association yes, so far? I am. Uh, I would say that if the Moodle User Association wants a progress bar, that that, that should be something that is developed from a, a different approach. Uh, the progress bar that I developed was like 1.8, 1.9, when there was no um, mechanism for drawing plugins together. There are better ways of approaching that now and more efficient ways. Um, it's, it's, uh, the concept is good. People want a time management tool. They want to see progress. Um, but I don't think that, that my plugin, it's, it's a dirty hack in some regards and it doesn't fit in core. Yeah. Um, later in my, in my closing keynote, you'll see an example of how progress bars can be implemented in Moodle. I think, it's, well, I, think, I think it's key. Everyone uses a progress bar for different reasons. Which use case is actually being requested in the MUA forum? Because it hasn't been explained yet. All right. I'm going to hand over now. This, this session is going to change from research to administration. And I'll hand over to Carlo as the